In this presentation, we'll look at the organizational units. When you access your SAP environment using your SAP logon pad, you will see a three digit number called client. If you have single sign on systems, then you can just directly access the SAP environment. So you do not have to enter a username and a password. But if you do have to enter a username and password, which will be provided by your SAP administrator, then you will also see a three digit box called the client. It can be made with numbers like 100, 110, 120, 200, 300, 400, and so on. These clients are individual unit and independent with its own separate mass data and transaction data. Hence, you cannot copy the mass data and transaction data from one client to another client unless you do an entire client copy. We will look at these terminologies later and this will be done by your system administrators. What you can move from one client to other client is the configuration settings. So you don't have to repeat the configuration settings multiple times when you go from one client to another client. For example, you will have something called a golden client or your development client where you do all the necessary configurations and then you can move it to your quality assurance client or you call it as a testing client. So all the configurations are moved to the testing client and you can create some test master data and transactional data, perform the necessary testings. And once ready, you can move the configuration setting to your production client, which is your live clients. If you're already working in an SAP environment, you'll be familiar with these terminologies. If not, don't worry, we will cover this across when we go into the later presentations, you will understand the configurations and what can be transported using configurations and so on. You will be given a username and a password, which is unique to this particular client. Usernames should not be shared between users because each user ID is tracked in the system. We briefly touched the terminology master data and transaction data in the previous slide. Now let's look at that in more detail. Master data is common data that is stored and replicated across IT systems. For example, your customer or vendor, which are created as business partners in SAP, it will be a master data. In this example, I've used Vodafone. It can be any other company or an individual as well, where you can keep on using the same information. So things like details of address, contact, payment terms, bank data, and so on, are all captured inside the master data. What is transaction data is that it uses the master data in its transactions. Simply, if Vodafone is your master data, you will be doing many different transactions with Vodafone, like purchasing a mobile, reloading your credits, making a payment, all these are transactions. Hence, these are called transaction data. The master data, you can use the same master data for multiple transactions. Another example is you can create a master data for your fixed asset. You have a vehicle, Toyota Corolla with number plate 141230. That will be a master data for you. And any transactions you do for that vehicle, like paying your insurance, paying for fuel, paying for maintenance, service, and so on, will be your transactional data. Because using for that same vehicle master data, you can have multiple different type of transactions which can occur frequently or in different cycles. So that's the main difference between master data and transaction data. Let's look at a couple of more terminologies, configuration and transport request. In your SAP configuration menu path, you will see step by steps like this. I've given a screenshot of an example where it goes like in a hierarchical tree format and you can narrow down to your configuration, which you want to do. You can see it's sorted out by different components and under that sub components as well. SAP comes with a lot of pre-built standard settings. However, you have to configure specific settings like creating your company code, your chart of account structure and so on. And once you do that configuration setting, it will generate something called a transport request. This transport request allows you to move the configuration from one client to another client. You will get a unique request number and you can create, put your own short description for your transport request. We will see this when we go to create our first organizational unit that is to create a company code. So we had a brief introduction to clients and now let's look at servers. 
So one server can host a couple of clients. For example, this is your development server and it can host a couple of clients. So you have one client for configuration, another client within that same server in the development server for unit testing. So you do your best configurations and then you can copy over that configuration to another client within that same server to perform some basic testings. And then if you're happy with that basic testing, you can release the transaction. Once you release the transaction, using that same transport request, you cannot do further changes. You want to do any other changes, you have to again go and change the configuration and create a new transport request. Once the transport request is released, it can be moved to different clients. For example, you can move over to a quality testing client. We can create more master data and transaction data to do further testing. And if you're happy with that, then you can move it over to your production environment, which is your live system. And then you can start migrating your master data and transaction data and go live with the system. This is a quick example given for using clients and servers. This will be mostly performed by your basis administrators or your system administrators. They will give you the relevant terminologies or the request IDs to use and how you can manage to release and transport your clients. If you're new to SAP and you have not heard of these terminologies before, don't worry about this. In financial accounting course, you don't have to know too much about clients and servers as this will be a more technical endeavor. The most important organizational unit in financial accounting is the company code. The company code, you can put up to a maximum of four characters over here. I give an example like M001, but you can put any combination of alpha and numerical characters. It's an independent legal entity. So that means legal entity is registered with your country's financial organizations. This legal entity, you provide financial statements. So your balance sheet and your penal statements are created at a company code level. In your company code, when you create in the system, we will look at this briefly. You will be putting a city. You will be initially giving the four character ID. You're putting a company code name, give the which city it, where it resides, the country, the currency, and the language. And later, once you're about to save, you can give more details about that company code, including the street address, the language, and so on. Hence, you create your company code, and then you can proceed on to next steps by assigning this company code with certain transactions and certain configurations, which we will look at this later in our presentations. Now, let's proceed to create our company code. Once you log into your SAP S4HANA environment, you will come to the SAP Easy Access menu. Now type in the transaction code SPRO and that will take you to the configuration menu path. So here I'm just going to select this icon over here, SAP Reference IMG, and it will take me to the configuration menu path over here. Just go to additional information, go to additional information again, display key and then select attributes. This will show the short transaction code for some of the transactions. You can expand the screen over here and probably just move it closer to this end. Now let's create our first organizational unit, the company code. So we, we go to enterprise structure over here and then go to definition, financial accounting, and you can see edit, copy, delete, check company code. There is a short transaction code for this, that is OX02. And we'll create the company code by using this transaction. So let's click on this icon over here. It's like a clock with a tick mark, edit, copy, delete, check company code. Double click on that and it'll bring you up to the screen. Copy, delete, check company code or edit company code data. So I'm going to double click the edit company code data line over there and you'll come to the screen and you can see all the existing company codes available in the system. I'm going to create my new company code. So I'm going to select new entries over here and that will bring me to a creation screen like this. Company code. Here I can specify an ID. I'm just going to call it as M001. So you can see it's not taken. So that's good. Company name. So I'm going to say M test company code. 
just give it an ID description for that company code. Now I can specify the city, the country, the currency and language. So city, let's say I'm going to use a US based company code. So I'm going to type it in Chicago over here. Country is US. Currency is USD. Language is English. It's a key fact, key field which you got to fill up over here. And then let's see the pop-up box which comes once you click on the save icon over here. And here you can fill in more information. And if you see a field with a small tick mark in a small box over here, it means it's a mandatory field. So we got to fill that in. And in this field, we can give more details about the company code. Like for example, how we can search this company code. Like can you have search term one, search term two, the more detailed street address. If it's got a PO box address, you can fill that up as well. Communication, including the company email, mobile telephone numbers and so on. So I'll just give in some information over here. I'll call it as a company. It's not an individual. I'll call it again the same name, M test company code over here. Search term, I'll call it M test. I leave that blank. Street, what's the street of this company? Uh, let's say Kingsbury Street. The number of the unit, so let's say number five. Postal code, that's your postcode. Just going to type it in 60600. And then put the city. City is Chicago. Country is US. Region is probably the state. So I'm going to type it Illinois. There it is. Let's select that. And uh, if you want, you can put further information, but I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm just going to click on this tick mark. So if I say OK or we can say ready to go, that means we can select this tick mark over here. And you can see a transport request is getting generated. Now you can create your own transport request. So I'm going to say, New, I'm going to create a new transport request where I can specify my own settings. So I'm going to call this as FI configurations, just to keep it simple. And then, okay. And that will be my new transport request. So I can use this transport request to save all my FI configurations. And in a real life environment, you'll be giving this your systems administrator and they can transport this transport request to your other client servers. Press OK to continue and it will get saved. Okay, get a message saying data was saved. Now successfully, you have created your first company code. And you can go back and you can see it's created over here. And if you just go back, you'll come to the main menu, close this and you're back where you started from. So we have successfully created a company code. You can also use the short translation code OX02. In this presentation, we had a quick overview of what is a client and some other terminologies related to master data, transaction data, configuration, and transport requests. The main organizational unit for financial accounting, which we created was to create a company code. And we saw how we can go through the SAP IMG menu path, that is the configuration menu path, and how we can create a company code. So for your assignment, practice creating a company code. You can create multiple company codes, so you have better understanding of how this has been created in the system. And it's quite easy because it's very right at the top, it's at the enterprise section level, and you can go to financial accounting and create your company code.